So I've got them laid out as they would come out from the research bag. And so then, depending on the number of players, you'll draw a certain number and you will lay them out. So you won't start with this many at the beginning of the game. They're going to come out sporadically, and you'll see that in the gameplay. Um, there are so, there are three different categories and they pertain to three pseudo tech trees what it um what it really boils down to is if you have a high level in one tech tree you'll get a bigger discount but also when you get to five or more no four, even four or more you'll start to get victory points on certain um on certain tech trees and so you can really push certain um, researchers. The um, the different um, you have you have some that are pertaining to parts on a on a ship, and you can see those parts down here, and they all have a symbol like this symbol here. Let me just pick this up and show you a bit closer. This symbol down here means it's relating to a direct upgrade for one of your ships. All the others are a special ability that you will unlock when you take the action. Okay, um, Some are things like an additional build action. You've got the neutron bombs, which is when you um, successfully defeat an opponent in their own territory, you can automatically remove any of their cubes instead of having to roll to hit for them. Um, you've then got the ability to build a star base. Um, you've got this one here, which gives you an extra influence disc, and that goes onto your um, your track of actions. Uh, you've then got the ability to build orbitals. Orbitals are discs like this, and they go down onto a sector that you control, and they then function exactly like a planet. And they can either receive a research cube or a um, economic cube, and they will increase your research or your economic income. Okay. Um, you've then got these three, which are functionally the same, and I think I've explained this already in the races video. But on a t on a hex, which has, for example, this hex here, you have the empty spaces, which can take. Um, any cube from that color and these ones with a little star burst in them they can only take a research cube once you've done the uh, the research upgrade for them okay so you need to have advanced labs to be able to flip a colony ship and put a cube into this space here this space just takes a normal colony cube as normal okay um, so we've done those three um, we've then got monolith. So monoliths are on the flip side of the of the orbital, so they're double double use. And these are three points at the end of the game if you control it. And whichever player controls them will get the three points, so they can become a objective. Um, you then have this artifact key. So get back, get the tile back to that I had before. Some of the tiles have this little um, diamond shape over here and you get five resources of your choice per diamond shape that you take uh, that you that you have control of okay and i believe those uh, the five can be different for every for every artifact but it's a one time use okay that's what this little symbol means it's one time and then you also have this quantum grid here and so this is two more influence discs onto your into your economy. So it will it will reduce your your monetary costs of running your empire, and it will give you um, a greater um, greater availability of discs that you can then influence and put out onto the board. And then the, finally, the the ability is this wormhole Gina. When you have two sectors that are only connected by a half wormhole, like I'm just going to use this tile again like so okay so without the wormhole gina 
you can't make it across this barrier, but with the wormhole gina you can. Okay, so it suddenly opens up a lot of hexes that might be hard to get through. Um, or if you get blocked out or you need to get access, that can be very useful. We then have the um, the upgrades. Now I won't talk about them here because even though there are some symbols that are, these can be useful, their full effect is down here and this can be something to bear in mind. Um, so each ship has a certain requirement. I again mentioned it, I think in my, um, maybe possibly in my setup video, um, so when you're setting up a faction, a ship must have a, a drive, a power source, and a weapon. And those, the power source, for example, cannot be exceeded, so you have to upgrade the power source first if you want to. Um, the, um, so for example here, the iron cannon, these are all the basic ones, so these are all the ones that you, every, every player starts with and they can be upgraded and added to any ship during using an upgrade action. So you can take upgrade actions without having done any research. And so we've got an iron cannon. That means one damage, in, and that means you're rolling yellow dice. It requires one power, okay? And then the upgrade for an iron cannon is a plasma cannon. And so it takes two power and does two damage and you'll be rolling orange dice. And then the upgrade for a plasma cannon is an antimatter cannon. So you're rolling red dice, it does four damage but it takes four power, so very, very expensive power cost there, okay? We can then move on to the electron computer, which is the basic, and so quite a few of the uh, bigger ships start with these. And this will increase your hit rate um, by one. So um, a little, I will go through a combat um, more in more detail, but to explain this, so a hit, um, a six is always a hit and a one is always a miss. And so, um, and then anything else between depends on your modifiers. Um, and so you're, with a plus one modifier, you will hit on a five and six when you roll. Um, and then the upgrade for an electron computer is a positron computer, so a two plus, so you will hit on a four, five or six. Or a glue one computer, a three, four, five and six. And these can stack, so you can have two or three or more the only thing is a one is always a miss. So there is an upper limit. You will never have a perfectly hitting ship, okay? We then have a nuclear drive. And these are the basic ones. So this means you'll move one hex when you activate a, a unit uh, using a move action. And it, it, it gives you one initiative um, as a baseline and it costs one power. And then the upgraded version of that is a fusion drive, which allows you to move two hexes with one movement action. Um, so a movement action is, is, I think the smallest movement action is always two activations. And that allows you to either move the same ship twice according to its drive or two different ships according to their drives. And obviously if you've got a human and it's three action move actions, you then get to move three ships. But you can again use the same ship multiple times. Anyway, so back to the fusion drive, you've got two hexes, two initiative and two power, and then the tachyon drive, three hexes, three initiative, it's kind of fading out there, and three power, okay? You then have the nuclear power source, and so this supplies three power per tile that you put, and then you very simply, you've got the fusion and the tachyon source, six and nine, and so they improve there, and then you have the hull, so this is, the hull or the improved hull, which is two hull on one tile. And then the only other thing we haven't, no, there's two other things we haven't mentioned. So you've got the Gauss shield and the phase shield. These make it harder for your opponent to hit. So either they mitigate the positron computers or the, the, the computers of the opponent. And so it, what it'll do is it'll reduce it back down. So an electron computer and a Gauss will cancel out and return the hit rate to six. Okay, so but if you had a gluon computer versus a phase shield, you'd work out what the you'd work out what the difference is, so plus one. So it's effectively like the opponent is hitting you for a five and a six. So effectively they've got an electron computer. So you can see that the computers get more powerful than the shields. And again, but you can stack the shields as well. Um, but as a reminder you can never go um, you can never go less than one in six chance of being hit. Okay, 
Um, and then finally, you've got these plasma missiles. Now, plasma missiles are slightly unusual. Um, you see the, there's two dice on this. So every time um, you go into a fight, for every plasma missile you have, you're going to fire two of them, and they do two damage. But the difference is they will fire once, and they will fire before everything else. So before the combat even, ex even starts, you then fire the plasma missiles. Now, if you have two people who have plasma missiles, you then respect initiative order. Okay. Um, and so then you'll have a, an effectively a plasma missile order round, and then um, if any ships are exist, you then can... Um, you can then um, go, go to normal fighting. If, for example, that this sh the one ship has only got plasma missiles, they then won't roll any more dice for the rest of the round. And that will basically um, mean they will just um, sit there uh, and to potentially take damage. Um, if you ever have a po point where both both ships don't have any, any way of fighting, then um, you have to retreat.